Welcome to the Savage Nation. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, we all know the topic. Uh, I'm being put in the position of looking. Uh, they want me to say something where they can paint me with the same brush that they're painting Trump. I'm not going to do it because I'm smarter than them. If you think I'm as dumb as Jerry Seinfeld or the morons on MSNBC, you're mistaken. But I have a question for the morons on MSNBC, including Phil Piffin. Phil Piffin of MSNBC, one of the most disgraceful men in the history of the media, lets these racist bums go on and on every day with the most hate-filled anti-white statements you could ever imagine, and no one says a word to him. But I have a question for Pill Griffin of MSNBC, and frankly CNN, and all the others who were screaming about Donald Trump using the S-word about Haiti and uh, regions of Africa, which is this. <clears throat> Can I buy you tickets to spend two weeks at a resort in Haiti, please. And by the way, while I'm asking you that, one question for you. Why didn't the Obamas rent a vacation villa in Haiti instead of Martha's Vineyard of Hawaii during their numerous vacations? They could have rented a villa in Port-au-Prince or in a more interesting, colorful district of Haiti. And yet they chose to rent a vacation villa uh, in Hawaii. I wonder why. Could it be because everyone knows the truth is you don't want to go to Haiti? That even Haitians don't want to go to Haiti. That's why they're running to America. Because it is exactly what Trump said it is. So now, of course, the knee-jerk liberals in the media are jumping from Trump allegedly using this word about uh, Haiti and, uh, and Africa uh, to say he should be running the Ku Klux Klan. This is an example of knee-jerk liberalism. This is exactly what passes for, for, for logic in the country today. But it all started with the sneaky bum, Turban Durbin who ratted out Trump at a private meeting. Turbin Durbin himself, as you well know, is the snitch rat who said that Trump said these things. So let's assume for the minute that Trump actually used the phrase that they say he used about Haiti and Africa, that we don't really want people from these countries because they're known to be destitute and, uh, and such. So Turbin Durbin himself is the snitch rat, but let's listen to what this filthy bum Senator Turbin Durbin had to say about United States Marines a while ago. And let me ask you something. What's worse, what Trump allegedly said about Haiti or what Senator Turbin Durbin, the snitch rat, said about U.S. Marines? Let's hear it. If I read this to you and didn't tell you that it was an FBI agent describing what Americans had done to prisoners in their control, you would most certainly believe this must have happened by Nazis, Soviets in their gulags, or some mad regime, Paul Potter, others that had no concern for human beings. This Sad is Turban Durbin. That's not the case. This is the evil this Turban the Durbin of America, who has never met a Muslim terrorist. Treatment of our, their own he didn't prison. embrace. He put down the U.S. Marines in the most disgraceful way, and there wasn't one word in the media except from outlets such as mine. And you're going to take this man's moral high ground? Are you joking? What skills or cultural qualities would Haitians bring to this nation? Why didn't the Obamas rent a vacation villa in Haiti instead of Martha's Vineyard? Knee-jerk liberal media hypocrites in Haiti. Every one of the liberal fools from Hollywood is jumping in on Trump's back. From Jerry Seinfeld, who's trying to show what a good liberal he is, while rushing back to his million-dollar Porsche, uh, making believe he's down with the people. And the fact of the matter is, the left wing in this country is clueless as to what life is actually like in Africa or Haiti. Most of them, if they go to the third world, they go on a private jet, and they go to a secure location on an island, somewhere where they're protected around the clock. They never, ever reach down into the world of the real people. It's been near, nearly 24 hours, and CNN and more snotty nonsense by communists, along with other mainstream outlets, are airing nothing but Trump's comments about Haiti and other nations, referring to them as assholes uh, during a private meeting on the immigration bill. Never mind that this leaked thanks to the sneaky rat Dick Durbin. What's important is why it happened and the hypocrisy of the blowhards on TV who seem to be taking glee in repeating that word over and over again. Think about that. Now, never mind that President Trump is a New Yorker, and that's the kind of language people in New York actually use. By the way, many immigrants use the same language about their own country. But what exactly did he say that was wrong? Was he talking about the people in those nations? I don't think so. 
if there's one thing about this president is that he respects hardworking people, no matter what their background or color is. But these media blowhards would have you think otherwise. Let's take Haiti, for example. We have some great Haitian people here. Mia Love, for example, the congresswoman from Utah, is a Haitian immigrant. There are many Haitian immigrants who serve in our military. Many have small businesses in the United States. But the nation of Haiti itself is a total disaster. There's no two ways about it. Its history is steeped in natural disasters, poverty, racial discord, and political instability. And, you know, you have to beg one question, and it's one that's very embarrassing for liberals because they have no sense of history or geography, for that matter. They don't even know science. And someone said to me, Michael, on my Twitter, I thought you had a degree. How can you ignore Haiti's history of exploitation by rich white men? Come on, Michael, you know better. Well, my answer was this. Wrong, Mark. Why is the Dominican Republic a safer, cleaner country on the same landmass, genius? Can any Jerry, Jerry Seinfeld, who went to the high school of performing uh, art, answer that question? Remember, the Dominican Republic and Haiti share the same island land mass. One is sort of thriving and doing okay. That's the Dominican Republic. Haiti is dying. Why is that? Well, they can't answer that. You see, after hundreds of years of being a French slave colony, yes, it was France who exploited uh, Haiti, it won its independence, and the 1800s had a line of successive presidents who drafted and abolished constitutions, leaving it to the whims of whatever dictatorial president was able to hold power at that time. Coups and assassinations were common. In the early 20th century, the United States did what it could to stabilize the island, even trained the Haitian National Guard. But after the United States left, Haiti fell back into dictatorship, particularly under Francis Duvalier, who made himself president for life. It was then taken over by his equally mad dictatorial son, Baby Doc, uh, during which time the country was starving to death, couldn't get food, couldn't get water, couldn't get jobs, people rioted. When the Duvalier regime finally left, Jean-Bertrand Aristide, remember him, led Haiti, but not to prosperity, but to violence and coups, leading Haiti to further chaos. Although Aristide is gone, basic services are still hard to come by. Does that sound like paradise to you, or more or less what Trump described? Now, getting to the other issue, which is more important in a way, which is, did you know the Dominican Republic is on the same landmass? inhabited by the people descended from the same people as the Haitians. Did you know that? Now, comparatively, the Dominican Republic is a success. Why is that? Well, it's true that in the Dominican Republic, they had their share of violence and corruption while the country was in development, as most countries do in their early stages. But in the Dominican Republic, they modeled their constitution on the U.S. Constitution. They also permitted the United States to help them avoid the scourge of communism. Did you know that we sent Marines and the 82nd Airborne into the Dominican Republic so the Dominican Republic didn't turn into another communist Cuba at our doorstep? And did you know that during this time they ambitiously built their infrastructure and in the late 70s they finally saw relative freedom and basic human rights and their economy began to grow and now they are moving ahead in technology? Did you know that you could actually vacation in the Dominican Republic with some degree of safety and first world services? It is not the people. It's the leadership. It's the form of government. It's the lack of will to use resources that makes these countries poor. The knee-jerk media liberal bro blowhards would never commit to a vacation to Haiti or Libya or Somalia. They know that President Trump wasn't referring to the people of these countries, but of the corruption of the leaders. It doesn't matter. The whole goal is to paint Donald Trump as a racist. They want to plant that in people's minds and will run with it as long as they can take him down. And don't think there's not a direct political motivation. The evil rat bum, Senator Durbin, wants to pass DACA and comprehensive immigration reform, which means anyone can come here and take advantage of this nation. And anyone who opposes them is painted as a racist. And that is what they're using to try and take over Congress in 2018. They will attempt to link anyone running for office with Trump and say they're also a racist. This is Jacques Hughes during the French Revolution on a different scale, but it's all a lie, and they know it. And as a footnote, Savage Nation listeners, some Africans actually agree with Trump, and I mean black Africans, 
if you want to know, the, you know, if I say white Africans, you'll say, of course they would know. Some black Africans agree with Donald Trump calling Africa what he called it. Did you know that? Mamade Traore, a 30-year-old sociologist in the West African nation of Guinea, uh, Guinea, said President Donald Trump is absolutely right. When you have heads of state who mess with the Constitution to perpetuate their power, he's talking about Africa, not the United States. When you have heads of state who mess with the Constitution to perpetuate their power, when you have rebel factions that kill children, disembowel women as saints, and mutilate innocent civilians, you understand that? So in order to understand the context of this uh, hate fest being promulgated by the left wing, by the media, you have to understand the context of the world, unfortunately, that is sorely missing.